to prevent serious or irreversible damage to the planet's ecosystems and animal life, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that by the end of this century, temperatures should not have risen by more than 2 degrees centigrade on levels from 1750. Now, most of our carbon dioxide emissions come from burning fossil fuels, and while renewable forms of energy will help to reduce emissions, they currently account for less than 19% of our electricity supply. New technologies take time to develop, but we already have something that is 50% less polluting than other fossil fuels, natural gas. Now, demand for natural gas is expected to grow by 20%, by the year 2020. In setting the themes for this series, we brought together a panel of experts. Here's Julian Lee from the Centre for Global Energy Studies. Uh, we need to find ways of utilising natural gas, particularly in the transport sector, where it's beginning to make inroads both as a fuel in its own right uh, and also as a, a fuel to generate electricity. There are plenty of fossil fuel reserves to be found. Uh, they will last us well beyond the end of the next decade. The biggest problems that they face uh, are, one, uh, their environmental or lack of environmental credentials. And the second, I think, is political, uh, that those countries that hold large reserves uh, of fossil fuels are less and less willing uh, to make them available in the quantities and in the time frame that people need them. Stretching from the Arctic Circle to the North Sea, Norway is the most northerly country in Europe, with a population of 4.85 million people. 90% of its rugged coastline is made up of fjords and bays, created over millions of years, just like Norway's biggest export, oil and gas. Norway has pledged to be carbon neutral by 2030, well, we've come to find out how it's working to lower its carbon emissions and help the rest of the world do the same. As more gas fields come on stream, Norwegian businesses are trying to find the most efficient way of extracting it by improving exploration accuracy and reducing waste. It's an iconic image, something we're all probably very used to, that flare from a gas or oil plant. It's used to get rid of gas leakage from the system and as a, a safety valve to relieve pressure from the system as well. But it's very wasteful. And in Norway, there are strict regulations on keeping those flares to a minimum. Millions of tonnes of CO2 are wasted each year by flaring gas. Hamworthy is a global marine engineering firm which has devised a way of collecting 100% of this valuable commodity whilst maintaining the safety of the industry. For years, industry practice has been to direct excess gas away from the main system and set light to it. Flare gas recovery is achieved by closing off the main safety system using a fast opening valve or plug. There is a fallback system in case the valve fails. The flared gas is then diverted. The company makes money out of the gas it captures and CO2 emissions are drastically cut. We're talking about three to four hundred million tonnes of CO2 going into the atmosphere producing absolutely nothing at all. So for no good reason we're creating an extra 400 million tonnes of carbon dioxide, pure pollution. That's correct, and that's gas which can be put to good use in, for producing electricity and other products, and it's just purely wasted. A non-renewable, valuable resource at a value of about 30 billion US dollars going up the chimney every year for no good at all. What we're doing essentially is to put a plug in the flare line. Now that seemed to be a very easy and straightforward thing, thing to do, but the industry has had a sort of a philosophy of no obstructions in the flare line. So although it's not a major technical challenge, it is a paradigm shift in the way of designing the systems. And what you need to do is to understand the totality. But there is no technical reason to continue flaring whatsoever. If you remove gas flaring, you remove the CO2 emissions, which equals about 10 times the total number of cars in the UK. 
So in particular, if you look at uh, CO2 emission reduction uh, actions we're doing in the, in the Western world, the significance of that is very little compared to what this could give us. So this, this is enormously important. I mean, this is, could be a, a it silver is. bullet. Absolutely. It is the best thing we could do short term to get CO2 emissions down in the world.